Hi, uh, Dr. Nichols, thank you very much for agreeing to spend some time with Ancient History Encyclopedia to discuss the Virtual Rome Project. My pleasure. Um, so the Virtual Rome Project seeks to recreate the eternal city around sort of 315 yes. CE uh, by using 3D modelling. Uh, could you just share some more information about this project and what it was that first got you interested in 3D modelling more generally? I first got into 3D modelling when I was doing my doctoral thesis on library buildings in the Roman world, and I wanted a way to illustrate these. I was talking a lot about where the books were kept, what the internal and external architecture looked like, where the stairs were, where there were doors, this sort of thing. And I found myself looking for ways to illustrate this. It's really a visual subject. And it went from there. And when I was appointed at Reading, I told them a bit about this, and they liked it, and I started building it into teaching in Reading. It seems a good way of showing students mm -hmm. what the ancient past may have looked like. And it grew and grew from there until I uh, was eventually making the entire city of Rome. <laughs> and that, it now finds a lot of uses in different contexts. Okay, brilliant. Thanks. So, um, as the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day. Roughly how long does it take to create a model of the whole of Rome? Uh, well, I've been going at it now. How long have I been in Reading? Seven years. So, um, uh, as long as that. And uh, not full-time, of course. And yes. it will never be finished, right? I will always have more to do. So you're sort of talking about the various technical mm. aspects of your models. Sort of what sources inform your recreations of these models then? Uh, it depends which buildings we're talking about. So for the most well-preserved, well-studied buildings, there's any number of archaeological plans mm. and elevations, uh, dig reports, ancient authors who give testimony about yes. the buildings. There's pictures on coins, there's inscriptions. Um, occasionally there are other iconographic sources like reliefs or mm. maybe even frescoes that show the buildings. So often there's a lot of information. Often there's none at all. If we're talking about the miles and miles of back streets in Rome that nobody wrote about, nobody made a bas relief of, mm -hmm. don't turn up archaeologically because modern Rome has obliterated them, mm -hmm. or they were sort of knocked down in, in whenever, fell into, into disrepair and all the usable bits were stolen out and reused elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So um, often there's no information at all. So between those two extremes, there's a lot of, <laughs> of guesswork. Yeah. But, you know, I hope educated guesswork, I yes. like to think. Yeah. And there are sources that we can use from which we can extrapolate, like, for example, the Severan marble map of Rome, the former mm -hmm. urbis, early 3rd century, map of the entire city. 10-15% of that uh, uh, survives. Mm -hmm. Some of that is identifiable fragments, which I've identified, or other people have identified, and I've made them and put them in. So all of the known fragments of the former urbis are in my model. Okay. That only covers a very small percentage of the city, but it gives us a set of cues mm -hmm. about... Uh, streetscape, texture, density, yes. building type, building mm -hmm. mix. Um, and I've been using those cues along with comparative evidence from elsewhere, other mm -hmm. Roman sites, uh, roughly comparable sites, yes. Ostia, for example, to try and give a sense of what mm -hmm. dense built up urban Rome may have been like. Yes, I mean, ultimately yeah. it is what I think it might have looked like, but I hope that my, my understanding <laughs> is as yes. informed as, as it could be. Other people, mm -hmm. of course, will take different views, that's fine, mm -hmm. but uh, this is sifting through the evidence as yes. I see it and yes. trying to produce a reasonable overall impression. Yeah. So in that way, there must be some buildings which I suppose are a lot easier for you to sort of, the creative process yes. of making them, others a bit more difficult. What would you say was your most favourite building to recreate? Oh, that's a nice question. At the moment I'm working on the Baths of Caracalla mm -hmm. and that, that has it all for me. Um, <laughs> th there's a relationship between easiness and, and level of information, it's inverse, I think. I mean, the easiest buildings are the ones where we have nothing at all. And, yeah. I, I, and also, no one's ever going to look at them in great detail yeah. in this model of Rome, so uh, sort of pop, 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 put a roof on, put the windows in, it's done. It takes mm -hmm. 10 minutes for a, a single house somewhere on a back yeah. street. Um, the bars of Caracalla I've been working on for months and months mm -hmm. because so much does survive that we want to get it right. Uh, so these, these are great buildings. Right? They're enormous, they're elaborately decorated, their structure and shape is extremely satisfying mm -hmm. to make. Um, a combination of really big massing blocks with very interesting internal mm -hmm. vaulted geometry, which is a technical challenge to do, kind of recessed coffering in a vaulting plane that curves in two directions at once. <laughs> yeah. it, it, I chose it because it, it, it raised my game in terms mm -hmm. of what I could make, and I'm, it's really fun. An enjoyable challenge, is it? Yeah, well? and the end result is going to be, well, I say it myself, but somewhat spectacular. Mm -hmm. What I'm working with, uh, we may get onto this, is some games developers for, for walk-around, immersive mm -hmm. 3D. And when you do that in a building of that scale and yes. that richness of finish, it's just uh, it's really, really exciting. <laughs> yeah. And I suppose the next question would be then, what was your least favourite building to make? Um, buildings early on where I found myself tearing my hair out, I could now make pretty easily. Mm -hmm. But I think there were some late lights, early mornings, early on, yes. where I just couldn't make the software do what I wanted to do, or it <laughs> crashed, or there's mm -hmm. annoying things that computers could do. So buildings in and around the Roman Forum, which yeah. is where I started, uh, posed a level of challenge that now I would find fairly trivial, but at the time caused me quite a bit mm -hmm. of... 
Uh, lots of coffee was consumed. <laughs> Brilliant. So, so far we've been talking about how this model has been made, mm. um, but there's a sort of end game, as it were. This is sort of to be used mm. and to help us better understand Rome. Mm. Could you sort of tell us some of the ways in which this model's enabled us to perhaps better understand certain aspects of the ancient city? Surely. Um, we can divide it maybe into three broad headings as research uses, teaching uses, mm. and sort of outreachy, commercially yeah. kind of uses. So for, for research... I'm working at the moment on illumination and sightline studies. Mm. So now we have the model. You can put a camera, as it were, anywhere in the model. You can go and stand on any street corner and just look around, mm. which opens up all sorts of possibilities for can you see this, this monument from this valley or this hilltop kind of thing. Uh, and illumination, I'm working on, for example, shading on the stages of theatres in Rome at different times of day. Uh, why does the Theatre of Marcellus point in one direction, mm. all the others point in a different direction? Okay. Having a look at what the sun does in relation yeah. to that. So there are research goals that one can pursue, and more will come along, mm-hmm. are coming along. For teaching, you can maybe imagine the uses, um, you're into digital education. Yes, um, yeah. I, at the simplest level, making pictures of Rome and showing students, mm-hmm. uh, and that could be in lectures, it can be in seminar packs, it can be in books, um, it can be in field guides. When I take the, the mm-hmm. Rome study trip that we run at Reading, yes. I take my iPad along with interactive haptics of the models. That's brilliant, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm working at the moment on an app where you can get it into the Google Cardboard, little cheapy 3D okay. viewer, so yeah. hopefully we could do a bit of that on the site mm-hmm. as well. Then yeah. there's... Sorry, no, <laughs> I was going to say, because for me in particular, I remember in my undergraduate mm-hmm. degree, when you're sort of first introduced to archaeological site drawings, and it's really, really difficult to mm-hmm. understand what the building's like with yeah. sort of black circles, mm-hmm. their columns raising up how yeah. many feet, and then... So for me, I, I think that, that that's a sort of great... I'm glad you say that, yeah. because th- that is the use that, to which I've been putting it. Students do find um, reading architectural and archaeological mm-hmm. plans difficult, or many students do, and fair enough, they're, they're heavily stylized mm-hmm. things. You need to learn to read them, but a, a colourful yes. 3D thing yeah. that you can fly through creates, maybe in that first lecture, a, mm-hmm. a more vivid impression that yes. you can then learn how to... What I don't want mm-hmm. to do is present something so glossy and colourful that mm-hmm. people say, oh, well, it must have been like yeah. that, right? Mm-hmm. OK, move on to the next question. Because, of course, there's, there's doubt, and we've just been talking about the, the differential levels of evidence. So you present that, but then hopefully you explain a bit about how you made it and yes. the kind of questions you've been asking me. And that leads on to a more uh, complex, more rich form of teaching with this, which is getting students to make them for themselves. Yes. So going through all of those research questions, mm-hmm. where do you find the evidence? Where do you have to extrapolate? How do you show that doubt or extrapolation within the model? How do you explain to people yes. what you've made? So we're just talking about the way in which the Virtual Rome project and 3D modelling more generally can be used as an educational tool. How do you believe that educators and students more generally can utilise 3D modelling to sort of better understand the ancient world? I think it's a really exciting and powerful mm-hmm. tool. And I think it's got to the point now where enough good software is available for free or for very low cost and that most modern computers can run it very adequately that it's really it's accessible in a way that it hasn't been before. Mm-hmm. So I am a classicist, I, I'm, I'm not trained in this stuff, I taught myself and I think other people can do that too at least to the extent of having a go with it. So I'm mm-hmm. talking to other um, academics, I've got school teachers that I talk to who are interested in mm-hmm. bringing this into the classroom because as we were discussing it's a vivid and rather fun way of exploring mm-hmm. the ancient world perhaps in a different sort of way. So the British Academy is currently generously funding me to, mm. to talk to people about that. I have an engagement award that I run with them. I ran a training workshop on SketchUp, mm. the software I used just before um, the Christmas break and mm. uh, may do so again in the future. Mm. So I think it's, it's important that people realise this stuff is accessible and fun and I just encourage people to have a go at it, really. <laughs> Brilliant. And then the final use of the model that I mentioned was outreach and commercial stuff. So mm-hmm. I've licensed it now a couple of times for TV broadcast. Okay. I tend to send the model off on a hard drive yeah. and commercial VFX studios do wonderful things to it. And it, it, it really <laughs> yeah. thrilling seeing the results they can obtain. It's been in various commercial publications. I want to do an app. I'm talking to a computer games company. Mm-hmm. We're making an MMORPG game yes. where you can walk around the whole of Rome. That's the idea. Mm-hmm. And I've seen the early tests of that. It's very exciting. We're going to put that into the Oculus Rift so you can walk around in true Brilliant. 3D. <laughs> so there's lots one can do. Yeah. Because it's a digital artefact, you can just keep on using it for different things mm-hmm. in different ways as the technology matures. Brilliant. Right, thank, thanks to you very much for your insight My on pleasure. your sort of research uh, and all that. Cheers, it's been a pleasure. Thank you thanks. very much. Cheers. Thanks.